Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us an advice in the Quran directly. He addresses us directly by calling upon us, by saying, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe. So if you subscribe to this title, you believe, you believe in your creator, you believe that he's one, you believe that he is the originator of everything, and that he's in charge of everything, and you believe he is unique and one in his names and attributes, and you believe he is one in his right to be worshipped, in his right for our devotion, that he's the only one who deserves our devotion and our worship and our ultimate love and dedication, then you fall under this title, O you who believe. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who believe, you should listen carefully. Because this is something that benefits you. This is something that is going to be helpful to you. It's a valuable piece of advice. And the advice in the Quran, one of the most beautiful aspects of it, it's very practical. And the blessings that you draw from it are countless. So you just pay enough attention. Put it in the right context and you can reap so many fruits in your life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum wala awladukum an dhikrillah. Allah says, O oh, you who believe, don't let your wealth, your possessions, whatever you have or whatever you seek and don't let your family your children don't let them take your attention away from the remembrance of Allah Allah is saying amongst the most precious gifts that he has given you is what you possess the wealth the assets the possessions that you have and the possessions that you expect to have and that you are seeking as your work, as your business, as your profession, as your career, which is a great blessing from Allah. And it is halal. And it's something you are supposed to have. You are supposed to enjoy. It's part and parcel of you being a human being and your children your children your family that is a great part of your life and one of the great blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he created us in this way that we humans be we human beings do not come into this life singular live singular and leave singular that's not the way humans are supposed to go through this life allah designed us in our default state that we want to connect this is why Allah created spouses for us from among ourselves. And He enabled us to procreate and have children so we can experience compassion. We can experience care and parenthood. And we can ex experience different types of relationships that bring about the best in us. These are great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in this advice, Allah is giving, Allah is drawing our attention to the fact that these blessings that I have given you to make your life more meaningful, to make your life more pro productive, to make your life more enjoyable, to make your life more rewarding. I'm giving you these things, but they should not exceed their limit. They should not deter you. They should not distract you from the main purpose behind your existence in this world and that's to connect to your creator la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah do not let your possessions and your wealth and your children and families distract you and take your attention away from the remembrance of Allah remembrance of Allah here stands for your connection to Allah your mindfulness of Allah, your love of Allah, your devotion to Allah, your focus on Allah, your dedication to Allah.
That's what remembrance is. It's a whole way of life that you live your life mindful of your Creator in almost everything you do. That's what you are, this is what you are created for. And we said repeatedly so many times that the Prophet ﷺ told us that we are born in this state of mindfulness and connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he said, Kullu mawludin yuladu ala al Each child, each human being is born in a state of fitrah. What does fitrah mean? Your natural state. And fitrah is what? You are mindful, you know Allah. When you're born, you know Allah. When you're born, you love Allah. When you're born, you seek Allah naturally. That's your natural state. So this is why Islam is the natural religion. It's the only natural religion. And that's why it's always been the way of all the prophets and messengers. From the time of Adam till the last man to set foot on earth. It's the natural religion. So when people become Muslim, and when people practice Islam, they're not adopting a foreign ideology or an alien methodology. They're just being who they are. They're just being human. They're just going back to what it means to, be, to naturally be human. That's what Islam is. Don't make it complicated. It is that simple. It's the religion of fitrah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the, in the Quran, Fitrat Allah, Faqim wajhaka liddini hanifa. Set your face, and that means your whole way of life. Set your face straight on the way to Allah. For the religion, for the deen of Allah. Fitrat Allah illati fataran nasa alayha. That's the nature upon which Allah created mankind. That's how Allah designed you. Don't take the political meaning of being a Muslim or how it's put within a political context. That will distract you. Being a Muslim means being just natural, being, being fully human. That's what it means. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, don't let your possessions, which are a great blessing from Allah, your family, the good things in your life, don't let them distract you from the main reason, the main purpose behind your creation. And that's Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a warning and he says, Whoever falls into this, whoever loses their purpose, their direction for the details of their life, which is their possessions and their children and other affairs, you get so immersed in them to the point where you lose your direction, then you are at loss. You are at loss. You have miss the point behind the test of life and you have not fulfilled you know, the requirements to get out of this life in a state of success so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is saying it's not only the bad things that take you away from Allah it's not only the sins it's not only the murder the killing of innocent people it's not only the zina and the fornication it's not only the theft, it's not only the dishonesty, it's not only the lies, it's not only the backbiting and the slander and the gossip that we engage in that takes us to the hellfire or takes us away from Allah. The naturally, inherently good things could possibly kidnap our attention and take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because we know that they are good, it doesn't occur to us to check ourselves against them. Have we fallen completely for them to lose our direction or are we completely focused on our Creator? So the point is here, if you're driving from here to Ottawa and on the way, you decide to stop by some for rest and to get some coffee. So you go into that gas station and you go into that mini market and you start buying stuff then you look around and you like the place. There is some greenery, some trees, some forest, and you start wandering around and walking around. And you spend five, six, seven, eight hours, and you miss your destination. That's exactly what many people are doing. Allah has given you the wealth as a blessing from Him. There's nothing wrong with wealth. There's nothing inherently bad about wealth or money. Money is just potential. It's just resources. 
It's how you keep it, how you earn it, how you manage it, and how you spend it. That's where the test is. But there's nothing filthy about money. Money is neutral. Money is a blessing from Allah. The same applies to your family. Family is inherently good. It's a relationship. It's for you to feel peace and tranquility and to feel the connection, the connectedness. Because we humans need to connect. This is how we grow. How do children grow emotionally? They grow by this connection with their parents, by this attention. This is why they need the attention of their parents. They don't, they don't just need their physical presence. They don't just need you to feed them and change their clothes and send them to school. They need you to be there for them. They need to see in your eyes and in your tone that they're valuable, that you appreciate them, that you are happy they are in your life. They need to see that your work is not more important to you than them. They need to feel that. They need to know that the football match on the TV that you're watching is not more important than them. And these days we have to say it as well to even to adults, older men. They need to know that your video game that you're playing is not even more important than them. They need to know that you care about them, that you're happy to come back home, spend time with them, quality time where you put your attention with them. Yet, this is how they grow. This is how they grow. And if we neglect our children, we're going to face serious consequences. You're going to face a generation with an identity crisis who doesn't know, a person who doesn't know who he is or who she is, confused. They really don't know who they are. The people who are at loss, they will fall for anyone who gives them attention or fake love. They will fall for that person and they might lose themselves in the process. They will fall for drugs. They'll have faith crisis. They'll fall for doubts about Islam and about Allah and about everything. They start doing bad things. They start getting involved sometimes in crime and bad things. Why? Because the parents were not there for them. They were there physically, yes. They were there financially, yes. But they were not there for them. They never felt the connection at a deep level. So despite all of this beauty in the relationship, how we grow and how we connect and how we flourish, Allah is saying, don't let all of these take you away from Allah. So the point here, what is the lesson in this verse? The lesson is alignment. Alignment. One day there was a man who came, a very eloquent man among the Arabs. During the life of Umar ibn Khattab, when he was the Khalifa, he was very eloquent, a public speaker, people admired him. He was very well spoken. He goes to visit Umar ibn Khattab. And it was the habit that when someone visited the king or or a ruler and they would speak, they would give some kind of a short khutbah, like five minutes, which shows their eloquence and their intelligence. So he stood in front of Umar al-Khattab and he spoke beautifully. And then he said, this dunya, we put it down. This life, we put it down. It takes us away from Allah. We don't want the dunya. And he says, there was a man with the white hair and white beard standing next to Umar ibn Khattab and he said Ala rasrik ya hada. he says take it easy O man take it easy Laqad amatta alayna deenana. you have killed our religion for us you have murdered it the man thought he was saying something something good then he says وَهَلْ نَصِيرُ إِلَى الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا بِالدُّنْيَا it says, can we make it to Akhirah and to Jannah with anything other than what we have in this dunya? Allah has given us this dunya to use it in a good way. To use it to make it to paradise. So don't put it down. Dunya is neutral. It's resources. It's how you earn it. Where do you place it? In your heart or your hand? You place it in your hand, fine. If you place it in your heart and it takes the place of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's where the problem is. But it's not the problem of the dunya, it's your problem. You didn't manage it well. And then how you use it 
in a good cause to help people to help a good cause and not use it not squander it not use it for bad things as well